Guys, Team 17 have released a helpful roadmap Q&A which sheds some more light on the content they have planned for the game. There is a lot of good news and in my opinion a bit of sad, or should I say disappointing news too. First, let me discuss the good parts. We have confirmation of the two brand new maps which are coming with the Brits in update 14 which is expected in June. This will include the much hoped for North African campaign with the El Alamein map. There were two pivotal battles fought near El Alamein in Egypt in 1942, the first in June and the latter across October and November of that year. Here are some of the first screenshots of that new map. These battles were predominantly fought by the German Africa Corps forces and British Commonwealth forces, but Italian forces also played a crucial part in that theatre of the war. I hope the Italian forces will also eventually be added to Hell at Loose, which does seem likely as Team 17 have stated they wish to include content for each year of the war from 1939 to 1945, so it would be a travesty not to include Italian forces at some point. The second map coming with the Brits will be set in Holland. The devs have said this will feature the rolling hills of Holland, so it's certain to be an Operation Market Garden map, which means it should feature equipment from 1944. This is a key point because another excellent bit of info we got from the devs in this update is that they are committed to keeping things reasonably historically accurate in terms of weapons, cosmetics and vehicles for specific maps. They said, while covering one year of the war for each game calendar year, we want to ensure we're keeping the player experience historically accurate and are working on ways in which we can determine loadouts, vehicles, cosmetics are only applicable to specific maps while keeping the gameplay experience fun and engaging. This is fantastic. Early war maps should have a different look and feel to late war maps when more developed weaponry and vehicles were available. I'm really pleased to hear Team 17 not go down the enlisted or battlefield route of cramming experimental or prototype weapons into their game. The devs have also confirmed that Mortar, something which was promised by Black Matter, the original developers, on their old roadmap and ominously omitted from the new Team 17 roadmap, is in fact coming to Hell at Loose. They said, we don't currently have a time frame on this feature, but it is something we want to include. That's good news, I really want to see Mortars added to the game. Another good bit of news is that the developer briefings will be coming twice a month now, so hopefully that means plenty more content for me to produce for my fellow Hell at Loose fans. Now, let's talk a little bit about the bad bits on this Q&A. Sadly, the devs have confirmed that the Finnish and Polish forces will only be available on the smaller game modes, not the normal 50v50 battles. They said, the Winter War was a drastically different style of fighting and the new skirmish mode in Danzig will be a different experience altogether. We have a range of specific weapons tailored to the individual, individual forces that will reflect the historical content for each battle space while still maintaining a balanced gameplay experience. They added, our smaller game modes offer a new Hell at Loose experience where Objective sees players working together to complete a set tasks and Skirmish will, will offer players the opportunity to jump into landmark battles over a single capture point. I think it is unfortunate that we won't be getting normal 50 v 50 battles with the Poles and Finns. I hope this can be revisited in the future. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see the Poles and Finns on larger maps too. Another negative is the ongoing wait for console server browser. Now I don't play Hell at Loose on console so this doesn't affect me but I know a lot of my viewers of this channel enjoy Hell at Loose on console and one thing that I keep hearing from them is a wish for a bloody server browser. Other features like vote kick would also be helpful for them. The devs have said the short answer to whether they get a browser or not is yes, server browser is coming to consoles, but the more detailed answer is that this will take some time. A large amount of work has been done to bring console to parity with the PC, but there is still a good amount of work that needs to be done before server browsing can be implemented. They said console players will start seeing some browser options with update 15 and they intend to make further improvements as the year progresses. The devs have also confirmed that they will be implementing a vote kick system for console players in the near future. Other news from the developers in this briefing is that the in-game store, which they mentioned, will be a place to easily access free and paid for DLC cosmetics. The non-verbal communication tools they hinted at last time will not be emotes. The devs have said, for players unable to use a microphone or for those who don't have access, um, the non-verbal communication tools will be a way for players to communicate using in-game commands and visual markers. We have no intention of bringing emotes or anything else that breaks the player out of the immersive experience that Hell Loose provides. Team 17 have also asked the community to vote on which of the existing maps players want to see refreshed. 
The six options are Purple Heart Lane, St. Mary Eglise, Carentan, St. Mary de Mont, Omaha Beach, and Utah Beach. Now my favorite map out of those is Carentan. So as long as the refresh just makes it look better and improves the performance and all that jazz without ruining it, I'd like to see Carentan get a little makeover. It would be amazing if we could get rid of some of the dead space and randomly inaccessible areas on that map. The map refreshers have also been pushed back from June to later in the year. Which frankly I don't mind as this particular feature of Team 17's roadmap isn't high on my priority list. To be honest, these maps are pretty fine as they are and none of them is particularly broken in my opinion. Team 17 have acknowledged that update 13.5, which was the first of their health orientated updates for the game, did bring some new issues while trying to fix some of the old ones. The devs said, Hell at Loose is a fantastic game on a massive scale, and as such, it will uh, take time to fix all of the known line. issues and unfortunately create a few new ones along the way. However, we are committed to eliminating all of the bugs and not introducing new ones as much as possible. As our team continues to get familiar with the project, we'll fine tune processes and procedures that will help us get patches and fixes out on a more regular basis. Some of the known issues which they highlight which came out of update 13.5 are that some players will be experiencing instances of rubber banding and high ping, which are also affecting VoIP communications. Uh, they're going to continue optimization on this front to increase stability across all game platforms. Uh, the Car 98 reload bug has been uh, acknowledged. They say on an empty chamber somewhere prints are presenting a reload animation issue. The team had prepared a fix for this, but that bug wasn't completely stamped out, so they're looking into it a bit more before they release a fix in time for update 14. They also acknowledge that when players equip the Flamen Weffer on the support role for the Germans, there is an issue with it clipping with certain uh, DSL cosmetics. Other issues that they're aware of include tank shot penetration issues, some LOD concerns, the floating pistol on the character front end menu, and some issues with third person sprinting animations when using some weapons. That's all for now folks, and now you know the drill. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe for more Hell of News news and kick-ass gameplay.